Hi from Multiversity Comics. I'm here today with the fabulous Joe Keating. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hello. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. Are you having a good con so far? Oh yeah, it's awesome. I mean, it's only been going on for like a day and a half, but yeah, it's been a great show. It's my first New York in about two couple of years, and I got a lot of stuff coming out here, so I'm pretty stoked. So this year is kind of like the year of Joe Keating for you, and this is like the con of Joe Keating because. <laughs> <How about> that? <laughs> You got, but thanks. <laughs> you've got two new books for us. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Uh, first book that we'll talk about is uh, the brand new Hell Yeah. Right, yeah. What can you tell us about that? Well, Hell Yeah is a creator-owned book that I've had the idea for since high school, basically. And it's just one of those things that's always been in the back of my head. Um, and then kind of going before then, inspired by discovering image comics and fanographics at the same time. And being like, like really into the young blood, and finding out like being thrilled whenever you know Shaft would stab someone's eye out with a pencil, with a pen. But at the same time, being like really into Dan Clowes and Adrian Tomine, and just like having all these different influences, Todd McFarlane, and just like Eric Larson, and just the stuff like mixing together with you know Yu Suarte, and later on like Moby, just like all this crazy stuff. So it came from a place where wondering like, well, what's in between all that, you know? Because I wasn't a guy who was like, oh, I'm only into Image Comics, or I'm only into Marvel Comics, or I'm only into Fanographics, or I'm only into Duran and Quarterly, or only European stuff. It was all this stuff I was loving, and it just got into this soup in my head. And eventually this, this kind of came out of that, that soup. So it takes place, hell yeah, is it takes place in a, 20 years after superheroes appeared, back in the, back in the 90s. And uh, it's about the generation who's raised in there. And it's kind of an examination of like what, it, what what I think would happen if you actually had all these crazy superhero concepts in a relatively real world setting, uh, but without being like, whenever people have done that before, it's always like, well, the Cold War goes on forever, or you know, this depressing thing happens. But I think if they're like magic rings and teleportation and shit, that'd be like awesome. You know, that'd be the coolest shit ever. And I always wondered, like, you know, like what Rob did with Youngblood, where he had superhero celebrities. I was like, hey, what would that affect beyond culture? Like beyond that, you know, beyond the celebrity. What would it be like to be raised in a world where, you know, you're not going to measure up with Michael Jordan or whoever. Like, there are, there are guys who can run across the planet. So if even the world's best Olympic medal athletes can't measure up to that, where do you fit in? And then taking really crazy, especially like, like Silver Age type of concepts, or inspired by Silver Age concepts rather, and applying that sort of a modern setting. And not being like pastiche or like ha-ha, but like this shit is actually all, can I curse on this? Is that okay? Okay, all right, good, I curse like a sailor. But uh, that'll be fun on the panel later. Um, but anyway, um, and just, yeah, being totally like, and, and just loving this, and just like, you know, shamelessly making a comic book that's meant to be read as a comic book with staples and, you know, ink on paper and, you know, so it is kind of a celebration of all that. It's, um, my collaborator is an artist named Andre Zamanowicz, who uh, has done some work on uh, Elephant Man and Pop Gun, which is where we kind of met when a book I edit or co-edit with him at Image Comics. Uh, and he has the same kind of enthusiasm for comics as a whole. So it's really, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty much the perfect collaborator I could have ever had for this thing that I wasn't even sure I ever wanted to do just because it was so in my head. I wasn't sure there was some, someone who had that same like, exact formula of enthusiasm for the exact same kind of stuff. But uh, meeting Andre has been phenomenal, and he's a great artist. And I do kind of worry that issue six will come out, and then like DC or Marvel will be like, Andre, come here with millions of dollars, <laughs> you know? But because, uh, yeah, he's phenomenal. But yeah, it's something I really want to do for a really long time, and it's amazing to finally have it come out through Image Comics, which is the company that sparked that flame. Uh, yeah, I, could, I couldn't be th more thrilled. So it's a superhero comic book, but it's not really a superhero comic book. So who are we following, and, and like, how is their, their journey affected throughout the time? Well, the, the character we start off with, because it kind of ventures off into different things, uh, but the main guy is this guy, Benjamin Day, and he's discovering that basically his girlfriend from an alternate dimension he's never met uh, is telling him that versions of him are being wiped out throughout the multiverse. And so he has to piece together where his life separated so he can figure out why these people are being targeted or why these other versions before, because he, he's the last Benjamin Day in the universe. So he's got to piece together what, what happened so it doesn't happen to him. Um, you were talking a bit before about how uh, superhero celebrity, kind of like that, that young blood idea. So are, are we sort of following him in uh, a non-traditional sort of superhero adventure as he tries to figure out what's going on? Is it more like a, a detective book than like a capes and tights flying around? It's just like, for instance, right, when I was talking to Andre about the design for the characters, I was like, don't look at other superhero comics. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But for this, I was like, look at Vogue France or whatever. Those people look like superheroes. Like, if superheroes exist, that's why they would dress. It would be crazy, you know? And, um, but it would be more rooted in the world of, like, fashion and, 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 and art. So, it's, I mean, 
I it's not a book where I'm like, oh, I don't like superheroes, so they have Minger dress up normally. Or, but I, I love super. I love the genre. I just want to like try you know, for, for for like a little bit different, you know. So it's Ben has powers and stuff, but he's not dressing up in a costume, you know. I mean, people wear domino masks because they're cool, you know. It's not like it's not like oh, you know, I'm a sidekick. I got to put this thing on. But it's a part of the larger world of fashion. So, I, I'm again. We're trying to filter what superhero costumes do look like through the fashion world, and this is kind of what comes out. So it's kind of this mix between, like, thinking about comics, right, or superhero comics. To me, that means it's a genre where you can do anything. In a medium, you can do anything. So why board up? Why make it just like, you know, hey, we're just normal dudes hanging out in a bar or whatever, which is awesome. I like those comics too. Don't get me wrong. But for where my interests lie, I want to do something where it's like with infinite possibilities, and I also want to make it accessible, right? Like my, you know, my uh, my girlfriend doesn't really read comics. I want to make a superhero book she could dig and like get into easily, you know, and not have to like have all this history. I mean, I love that stuff. You know, I love Marvel, DC, and Image, and whatever, and Dark Horse. Um, I like that, stuff, but I do, I, I, you know, I want to find something for that kind of people, like people like me, but also something that if you've never read a superhero comic in your life. You're not bogged down by all these references. But if you have read a bunch of superhero comics, you can get like, oh, hey, this is kind of the, this or that or the other thing. Um, maybe that's too, like, grand of an idea. I don't know. But that try anyway, I guess. <laughs> that actually kind of, um, you, you sort of talked uh, briefly about what my next question was, is that with a lot of uh, superhero books that are not tied to Marvel or DC, um, you know, you look at a book like Invincible, and there are characters that are obvious, like, sort of kind of references to, to bigger heroes. So is the basic idea here that you're, you're more want to uh, stay away from sort of doing other heroes and more towards the celebrity world, so that there might be a, a kind of Brad Pitt person? The people affected by the celebrity, right? right. So, like, if the Justice League... Why not? I'm, I'm so old. I, I, I know I look like I'm 12, but I feel like an 80-year-old man. Like, what's the big band right now? Like... Avengers Justice League. Oh, oh wait, well, yeah, eventually, I don't know, whatever the, but it would be, it would be Avengers of Justice League, right, in the in the superhero world. So this is more about like, you know, K Records or whatever. Like I guess it's like the K Records equivalent of superheroes, you know. I actually really like that. So outside of um, you know being rooted in a more realistic world without being fully realistic, uh, what are some of the other influences that that go into it? It's a huge list, dude. Because like I said, it's not just like, I mean, the early image stuff. Like, that's why I want to make comics. Do you ever read Spawn number 10? Where it's like the serious issue? I have, it, I have it framed on my wall. See, when I was reading Image initially, I mean, look, I'll age myself here or de age myself. I, mean, I was like in fifth grade. And I was reading all these all these comics, super comics, whatever I could get. I was rabid about hot stuff. I don't care what it was. You know, Harvey Comics, Archie Comics, Marvel Comics. So, but being that age, everything kind of seemed from the same company. You know, like I didn't really differentiate between, oh, this is this Marvel, this is DC. But th when I got the image stuff, something was different. I was like, holy crap. Like, even though these are the guys who are doing X-Force or Spider-Man or whatever, these comics weren't like anything else. And I didn't really get it at first. But when Spawn number 10 came out, I didn't get it at first yet either. Because that is a crazy comic. Because you got Spawn walking around and there's like Cerebus hanging out. And I guess he gets Superman his powers. And again, when you're that age, you're just like, what the heck, you know? But when I was like rereading it, rereading it, and kind of getting the subtext, I was like, that's why I want to make comics. I want to make my own stuff. In addition to playing in the sandbox, it's like Marvel and DC, that's awesome. I definitely want to do that too. But in terms of like, what got the spark going was definitely that understanding what Todd was doing, what Dave Sim was doing, what all the image founders were doing, Jim Valentino, whoever, you know. Um, so to answer the question, I kind of went on a you know, tangent. I, I think it, I think it comes. Oh, yeah. yeah, that works. Your favorite sandwich, and I'm like, Spawn 10's crazy. You gotta check it out. Well, that actually brings up an interesting point. What is your favorite sandwich? Uh, there's a, a cart in Portland. I, I'm, I, I live with like all the rest of comics in Portland called Big Ass Sandwiches, and like I know I'm like like you were like, wow, really with your girlish figure, you gotta eat at a place called Big Ass Sandwiches. But yeah, they make a kick-ass turkey, and they put like I don't know if you really want to get you really want to get there's a massive sandwich. It's amazing. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm like third, I think. 